So January 2023's uh, Q&A video. So this is the first Q&A video without social media. So I'm genuinely so appreciative of everyone who posts on Discord for these questions. Really, really means a lot. Thank you very much. If you don't remember the Discord, you probably find the link in the description of this video. So you'll be able to join it. Sometimes we have fun. Sometimes it's a little quiet. Sometimes we share pictures of pets. It's a good time all around. So we're going to split this video into sections. So we're going to have a section on streaming first, then we're going to move on to the questions about games and then general questions and then hardware questions. So there'll be timestamps underneath so you can tune into the bit that is most relevant to yourself, just in case you don't care about the game side of things or you don't care about the streaming side of things, who knows? So Peripheral Echo Alpha, no relation, asks, what are your plans for 2023 considering streaming? Uh continue streaming is a is a pretty decent answer i think um so what's the what's a good way of answering that well i'll give you the honest answer the honest answer to me from a from a business point of view from a peripheral media point of view is i want to work on my content structure and content delivery uh so content consistency so this might be a little bit more boring than you probably wanted um but I want to I want to uh, solidify a, a brand within peripheral media, within Screaming Nerd Joypad, within Lo-Fi Gaming, all of that sort of stuff. I want people to go to a place and to know exactly what they're going to get when they see this face. Like, I'm going to go to this channel and I'm going to see spooky horror streams. I'm going to go to this channel and I'm going to see chill Lo-Fi Gaming. You know, I'm going to go to this channel and I'm going to see Tech Talks or Mike's going to be ripping his PC apart and making God knows how many mistakes that sort of stuff um yeah i guess that for 2023 early 2023 is probably my my like q1 2023 is my plan for that from a business point of view from a streamer point of view just stream more like i don't really mind if i'm made partner in 2023 um that's not really something i i it would be nice but it's not something i'm aiming for um i just want to enjoy streaming and i just want to fit it in more if that makes sense so hopefully that answers that question. Um, Peripheral Echo Alpha also asks, what are your plans concerning D&D &D and perhaps Barony streams with Darksaber 2K and Pyron Jade? Quick side note, if you don't follow Darksaber 2K or Pyron Jade on Twitch, you should definitely go check them out. Also check out the GOG.com community, G-O-G-C-O-M, over on Twitch, uh, because they're all good people. They're all very passionate streamers, they're all great gamers, and they're all, if you enjoy any of my stuff, you'll enjoy all of their stuff as well. Um, but back to the question, concerning D&D, I would, I, I'm continuing to play DD, that's never going to be a thing. I'm probably going to start working more on some homebrew stuff for DD, to be honest with you, um, which I'll probably stream. Um, but I haven't really got proper plans for that at the moment. That's a as and when sort of a thing. And if there's DD streams available that people want me to join in, I'm always free. Um, or I'm almost always free. So the multiplayer streams for barony that's I, I had loads of fun playing barony it was a laugh uh, even when i was getting squashed by boulders and tricked into falling into pits it was a lot of fun and they all know i, I say they the, the godcom community know and all my friends online know if there's a spot open on a multiplayer stream they normally hit me up on discord and say you know are you free this saturday or something like that sometimes i am sometimes i'm not hence why sometimes i'll pop into the phasmophobia streams in vr and sometimes I won't be available to. So uh, whenever there's a spot, I'll I'll play. Uh, Peripheral Echo Alpha also asks, will there be a proper schedule of streams? Brilliant, brilliant question. Um, short answer, yes. Long answer, yes, but I don't know when. So at the moment, um, this entire setup behind me is due to change. D Everyone in my Discord knows, every member of the community knows that I, I suffer from uh, uh, boredom, <laughs> essentially. So I will I will completely change all of this. But I'm making it so it feels more permanent. Not that I'm just bored and I want to change it. I'm just, I'm very settled where I am right now in the room, in the space, in the studio, that sort of thing. So I just want to make, I want to put down content creation roots, if that makes sense. Um, which will lead to more, hopefully, more content creation. But proper schedule of streams, it's a little bit difficult 
to say right now with certainty because of a couple of things. One, I've got different peripheral media work in the pipeline. Two, I have a day job. Three, I'm gonna start training again because my knee is now getting better. So I'm gonna start my powerlifting training again. All of that eats up time out of the, the, the week, if that makes sense. What I'd really like to do first and foremost is to say, if you tune in at this time this day, you will always see my face and you will always hear my voice and you'll always see a game that I'm playing, regardless of what that game might be. Um, and aside from that, I will drop a link in Discord whenever I'm going live. FYI, that's probably the best way of finding out when I go live is to join the Discord. Um, again, no social media at the moment. So yeah, so dropping a link in Discord, actually I have a bot for that, um, dropping a link in Discord just to say, hey, I'm live playing Silent Hill 2 or Barony or the truck outside, I don't know if you heard that, or something else, then uh, yeah, then that's probably the best way. So I'd really like to at least set one time slot out of all the week at first, and then maybe grow that and grow that. The only problem that the only problem with that is if I'm doing regularly scheduled streaming and also client work and also day job and also social life, that becomes a bit too much for me, and I suffer, I will suffer from burnout. That's a red flag, if that makes sense. So sometimes if I've got a lot of client work on, I'll probably cut back on the streaming, but maintain that, you know, once a week, twice a week, that sort of thing. So, long answer, yes, but I'm not sure when. Short answer, yes, there is a schedule coming. So thank you for asking about that. Um, continuing on the theme of streaming, uh, the the pirate tester asks, how did you decide to be a streamer? That's an excellent question. Um, narcissism? I'm not 100% sure. Um, ego? That's a really good question. I have been making YouTube videos for as long as I can remember, and I've probably deleted more YouTube videos than I've created, unfortunately. But streaming, I remember, uh, was it back in 2019, 2018? No, way before that, sorry. Uh, 2014 or something, I started streaming charity events. So I started streaming for things like Gaming for Trinity, and I did the Scoliosis Association stream ages ago. And they were they, they were good streams, they were 24-hour streams, but that was when I suffered from Virgin Media Internet. So you streamed longer than five or six hours, and they just sort of bleh, crippled your connection which was unfortunate that's not really a problem here um we're with a different company now so that that connection is pretty stable so yeah how did i decide how did i decide to become a streamer i think that's probably a question i've answered recently rather than previously i think it became it felt like it went hand in hand with uh making youtube videos so i make youtube videos edit them put them together or stream whereas i deliver that uh, information and video and entertainment instantaneously now i think i've realized after many years of self-realization and therapy etc that i just like playing games for an audience as and as egotistical as that might sound that's that's the real reason i've come to peace with that i like playing video games for an audience and i really like that sense of community where you're all sat around playing a multiplayer game or you're even playing a single player game like when you were younger and you used to play past the pad like you know you'd have a life on mario and then you'd pass it to your friend who'd have a life on mario and then you pass it to another friend that sort of thing but there's a shared kind of connection there and i think that's what streaming just enkindles within me um for want of a better term but yeah that that's it probably didn't i didn't sort of sit and go you know oh light bulb moment i'm going to be a live streamer uh it just kind of happened very gradually and i think recently i've been doing it for so long that i've now figured out well why am i actually doing this because i like playing games for people <laughs> It's a good question. It's really made me think that one. Um, Parrot Tester continues with, what hurdles have you had in your journey that others could learn from? Um, I'm going to assume this is about streaming specifically because yeah, I've, I've been in a lot of different industries. Um, but streaming specifically, I'd probably say the biggest hurdle I've had is putting too much pressure on myself. 
for the longest time I streamed because I thought I had to. Uh, and I streamed the latest releases, and I streamed games I wasn't interested in, and I streamed even to the point where I was streaming on the GOGCOM channel when I was a member of the GOGCOM uh, Twitch streaming team. Um, I was playing games I didn't care about, and I've now realised, like of recent years, realised that I was doing it for content. That don't do that. Like don't do something you're interested in I, that's my personal feeling anyway they say if you enjoy what you do you never work a day in your life it's not true it's still work don't get me wrong but you can make it easier on yourself hello hugo uh you can make it easier on yourself just to enjoy more what you're doing find your niche you know it's taken me a long time to realize that my niche is actually diametrically opposed i like playing chill lo-fi games and i like playing spooky indie horror games as well those two things don't gel but those are what i'm interested in i also like vr games as well um so yeah all of that is not a cohesive thing um but that's what those are my niches that's what i'm really interested in um so yeah find find your niche and don't worry about being um for streaming specifically don't worry about being the next big insert popular name of streamer here there's already an insert popular name of streamer here be the next yourself you know if you have to emulate another person in order to gain the confidence of doing it that's absolutely fine uh, one thing I will say is if you want to start out streaming, there is no better time than right now. This console generation all have inbuilt streaming capabilities. Um, so you, if you want to just pick up a game, play for an audience and see what happens, you can do that. That's absolutely not a problem. Don't go spending, don't buy the full kit before you know you want to do it for a, a longer period of time don't go out and buy a thousand pounds worth of digital camera don't go out and buy two thousand pounds worth of pc and you know all the latest game consoles and the latest capture card and don't you know sell out elgato of all of their stuff just see if you want to do it first um on a side note of that if you do do it just i don't know just, uh, there's a there's a whole um, uh, ethos around streamer etiquette. Don't shout out people's names when they're lurking but not chatting. I don't do that. I don't find it comfortable if that's happened to me. If I'm just watching someone stream and there's they've got like four viewers, that's fine. That's because I want to watch that person's stream. But if they're like, oh, peripheral mic, why aren't you chatting today? I'm out. I'm out completely. Um, so yeah, you know, say hello to the people who are there. Say hello to people who say hello, um, and learn learn to be comfortable with the sound of your own voice. That took me a while of video editing, but learn to be comfortable with the sound of your own voice because you'll be hearing it a lot. You you're basically talking to yourself. You're talking to a piece of glass essentially. Um, there is no human being there. So you have to be comfortable talking to yourself. You have to be comfortable talking and streaming to no one for a very long time. But that will that will be part of it. Um, but as long as you're comfortable with that. The one of the ways I got around that actually um, was I would stream as though I were recording this for someone to watch in the future. And not necessarily like, oh, if you're watching this on demand, this, that, and the other, or, you know, you don't need to say those sort of things. But you can still be into it, still make commentary about what's going on on screen. Um, still, you know, if you want to say something, say something. If you don't want to say something, don't say something. There are plenty of streamers out there that, you know, don't talk. They don't have a microphone, they don't have a webcam, they're very successful. But I will say they're the exception rather than the rule. Um, the rule is you're a presenter. You're, a, you're an entertainer, you're a presenter, you are the face of that. Because if, if, if it's not you they're tuning in for, then it's somebody else they're tuning in for. Okay, So just be comfortable talking to essentially no one um, and just be comfortable filling air. A little bit like I'm doing now, instead of going on to the next question that is from the pirate tester uh, who asks how much time and effort goes on behind the scenes before the stream is done uh, as well as afterwards that folks might not be aware of that all depends uh, that could depend highly on your level of tinkerage and um, by that I mean I have a horrible habit of unplugging stuff and plugging it back in 
Um, so I'll have random audio issues, I'll have random video issues, and those will be a common thing. You'll always get these in streaming and in content creation. You'll become an entertainer, a presenter, an audio engineer, a videographer, a video editor, a um, social media publisher, a social media SEO expert, that's all of these things. You'll wear many different hats, so you'll need to know a little bit of all of these, of these different jobs. Or you'll learn just by proxy a little bit of all of these different jobs, just by figuring stuff out, by Googling stuff, and just by asking people in the community on your little circle of people that you either follow on social media or you just talk to in general. What do I do when my Elgato capture card doesn't work? You know, oh, well, I'll Google it. Fantastic. Doesn't work with Mac. Great. I, yeah, that can't work anymore then that sort of thing you'll find solutions to stuff but before the stream happens it's normally um it's weird for me because i feel like i need to prepare the stream more before than after so before the stream i like to make sure everything is perfect i will redouble check all of my scenes in obs i'll redouble check all of my elements all of my everything else I'll, I'll almost go through a, a rehearsal a dry run if you will that's probably something i'm going to stop um because that takes up a lot of time so if i start a stream at 4 p.m um which incidentally is when i finish work so it's not gonna be 4 p.m let's say 5 p.m finish at 4 start streaming at 5 i'm checking stuff at 10 past 4 until five o'clock that's that's a long time and i probably don't need to do that um subsequently afterwards it can be one of two things for me if it's a what i consider to be a good close <laughs> that's like i can end the stream say thanks very much for tuning in catch you next time stay safe and i will just press stop streaming obs will close or i'll close obs and i'll just go i'll press my little macro com key command to close all of my applications i'll turn everything off and i'm out the door a rough close is when I've had any technical issues on stream and I've had to diagnose them or I've made myself a note to oh by the way I've jerry-rigged this together for the actual stream just fix this afterwards that sort of stuff that can be a bit of a rough close um, for streaming specifically then if you want to do anything like video editing your stream you have to then download it from Twitch you have to edit it you have to upload it to YouTube or you can export it to YouTube and do what you want to do there um, but it all depends on what you want to do with that actual media after you've created it um, so yeah, get comfortable with with sort of media editors and video editors if that's what you, if that's the route you want to go down. If you just want to stream, you just want to literally go live. Hi everyone, pew pew pew, bye everyone. Stop stream, and then you don't want any more involvement in that. You can do that as well, but that's another another branch of the same tree. Um, so hopefully that helps. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, moving on to the games section of these questions now, uh, Focal Horizon 899 asks, so you've been covering video games in one form or another for quite a while now. I have, thank you. Uh, what would you say has changed the most about video games in that time? Also, in what ways have you changed in the way you look at and think about games since, say, the Slim Gamer days compared to now? Now, Focal Horizon 899, I used to work with Focal Horizon 899. He's a good man. Um, and we used to work on Slim Gamer together, the website slimgamer.com, um, which was one of, I would say, a, a low to medium hitter in the gaming network back in the day, about 15 years ago. Uh, but now it's absolute trash. Um, and I can say that with an open heart because it is absolute trash. But the way I used to think... So let's, <laughs> let's cover the question rather than reminiscing. Um, what's changed most about video games in that time? changed most in the way about video games at that time um there's not as much experimentation i think oh no well then maybe there is because you've got a lot of indie games now like there doesn't feel like there's any um there used to be a term called double a games uh whereas you'd have most people know the term triple a title okay that means it's a big blockbuster title you're talking your big console release exclusives your massive blockbuster ones your call of duties your horizons um loads and loads of, yeah elden rings you know loads of big big ticket games and then you've got 
indie games. So you've, you've not really got, there's a wasteland between that point, and that wasteland used to be filled with AA titles. These would be titles like movie tie-ins that weren't quite successful, um, games that tried something new, or games that were developed by companies that didn't really understand that genre, so they just kind of mashed something together. Um, and these would be a bit janky, they'd be a bit rough around the edges. Sometimes they would be um, uh, amusing and entertaining, and sometimes they wouldn't. Uh, but there's not a lot of that anymore. There's not a lot of Wasteland games, if that makes sense. There's not a lot of double-A titles, which I think is a shame, because we used to get some really good double-A titles. Uh, I mean, we got some bloody shocking ones as well, but we used to get some good double-A titles. Um, and the, the second part of the question is, also, in what ways have you changed in the way you look at and think about games since, say, the Slim Gamer days compared to now? And that was a long time ago. But... One thing I can say is working in video games and now not working in video games. I do, I technically am working in video games, but I am now creating content rather than, you know, reviewing a game, getting in touch with the publisher, doing an embargo, that sort of thing, doing an embargo, sorting out the details of an embargo, um, communicating with writers, editing, that sort of thing. I enjoy games a lot more now. Like that's that's very much something that I figured out recently is I enjoy games a lot more. Case in point, I played recently. Uh, I would probably say just for Christmas. This is January when I'm recording this. Um, I played Portal Two, and I hadn't played Portal Two since its release. And I released it. So I've released. I released Portal Two. That's a bold claim. Um, it was. I reviewed it for release, and I got a copy two or three days before it was due to be released. Uh, sorry, two or three weeks before it was due to be released, but it was two or three days before the embargo. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what an embargo is, basically, it's like a non-disclosure agreement. You say, you sign something to say, you know, um, I won't post anything online until this date, this time. And everyone just, games publishers kind of trust that you're going to do that. And sometimes you don't do that. And sometimes if the embargo is 9 a.m. on a Monday morning, and then that's when you see everyone's review goes live. That's because everyone's under the same embargo. If someone's review goes earlier than that chances are they're not going to get a review copy from that company again um that never happened to us which i was really pleased at uh, really pleased about um but i do know some people who did it and they did it quite prolifically as well but they didn't last very long um in the industry because you don't make friends that way like sometimes you got to work with people it's professional courtesy so if you say you know i won't release this review until x time you don't release that review until x time but um, yeah, so I played through Portal 2 recently on uh, Xbox and I enjoyed it way more than I remember enjoying it. And when I released it, when I released it again, I released Portal 2. When I reviewed it for release, I was on holiday. <laughs> so I got it the day we were leaving and I literally had to play it at a family member's house like overnight. Like, for two days, like eight, two days of the holiday up, um, where I was just con I was just chewing through it, making notes, chewing through it, making notes. Um, and then I had to write my review, and then I had to get it edited, and then I had to rewrite my review, and then I had to publish it. So I only had a couple of days to do, or a few days to do this. And it wasn't a fun experience. It wasn't a fun experience for me, the people around me, because I was just out. I was out of circulation for that time. I was like, this is important. I got to do this. And everyone understood that, but that means I was sacrificing days of my holiday in order to do that. But played it uh, recently, and I realised that I actually forgot a lot of the uh, uh, funniest bits of Portal 2. So I remembered big ticket like story moments, like maybe the beginning, the middle, and the end. But I'd forgotten a lot of the stuff in the middle, a lot of the puzzles, a lot of the dialogue, a lot of the interactions, and I just enjoyed it so much more. It's, and I do, I enjoy games a lot more. I know someone who recently had to play Elden Ring in less than... 30 hours before embargo and they had to play it complete it I, I think they completed it i'm not sure they had to play it complete it re review it edit it and release that review and they never want to play it again which is a real shame because i sunk over 100 hours into elden ring and i think it's one of the best games i've ever played so it's it, it takes away some of that joy so that's how I've changed in games. I enjoy games a lot more. I enjoy what I play. I don't have to feel like I play something for a purpose. I'm playing something because I enjoy it. 
Um, Peripheral Echo Alpha asks, with what happened to the screaming at a joypad slash screaming joypad label, will you stick with the peripherality, peripherality of peripheral mic for years to come? I love how linguistic peripheral echo alpha is. Um, well, I don't, I'm not 100% sure what you mean by what happened to the screaming at a joypad slash screaming joypad label. That still exists. It's still a thing. Um, and that's just where some of my horror stuff is going to be going in future. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm more than happy. I mean, I the the company name is Peripheral Media. Peripheral Media uh, came from um, it being tangentially linked to screaming at a joypad, and screaming at a joypad itself was uh, screaming at a joypad was my blog name for a very long time, and screaming joypad became my screen name for even longer. So yeah, it it kind of. I remember when I, I first created that title, Screaming at a Joypad, that I was like, well, the tagline was whether through frustration or uh, elation, I think it was, frustration or elation, we're screaming at our joypads. And I was, I was dead proud of that. But I was like mid-twenties when I thought of that, so I was dead proud of anything. But yeah, I was dead proud of that, and that stuck for a very long time. And then I realised I actually wanted to make a business out of it, and I'm like... Do I want to limit the company name to Screaming at a Joypad? Probably not. I want something just above that. Just in case I want to do any other little endeavors or side projects or anything like that. Not everything's going to go through that channel. So I was like, okay, I want it to be a media company because I was already starting to get, in, get into video editing for other people. I was doing uh, photo editing for people also and course creation as well. A lot of my LinkedIn learning courses um, were starting to, to sort of take off properly or the idea of them was starting to take off. So I was like, this is a thing. I need to, I need to actually you know, put a name down. So I realized I wanted it to be a media company and peripheral just stuck so as for as long as as far as i'm concerned for as long as the company's there i'm going to be peripheral mike uh where are we up to ah Flaos asks if you were forced to choose between robot overlords and billionaire overlords which would you choose and why well it's an excellent question Flaos. i think we already have billionaire overlords and look where that's gotten us so i would probably pick the robot overlords because i have a, a feeling that a robot overlord um i'm going to assume <laughs> putting my tech head on i'm going to assume that this robot has been created by a human so its ai matrix and its neural network has been programmed by a human being it's only going to be as smart as the human being who programmed it maybe you know a little bit of a, a little bit of leeway here and there but I think it's going to have the bias, unconscious and uh, conscious and unconscious bias of the team of engineers who actually built it, not necessarily the billionaire overlord who may have programmed it. Um, unless Elon Musk decides to make robot overlords and then we're all screwed. But I think, you know, by and large, a team of engineers would probably come up with a more conscious, um, a more um, social conscious uh robot than a billionaire would so i'd pick robot overlords probably uh peripheral echo alpha asks uh, considering your adventures in the digital world of creation have you considered to watch out so you don't get burned with overwork uh yes um i'll talk a little bit about how that came about uh but also what sort of safeguards i have in place so Many, many years ago, I was a host and producer of the most popular gaming talk show on Twitch, The GogCast. If you don't know it, then there'll probably be a link in the description to so it can take you to it so you can have a look at what it was like. Um, but basically, I was doing lots and lots of work. I had a bit of help, but it was a weekly show, which was rough, um, especially considering all of the prep work that had to go into it, all of the prep work that had to go into um, talking to guests, corralling guests, getting content together for it. And it was a two-hour show, so I was like... This is, this is pretty big. So it's basically a, a one-person band spinning a lot of plates at the time. And I wanted to be a streamer. And I wanted to be a YouTuber. And I had a day job. And uh, at some point, a social life. So all of that kind of culminated into me getting really, really sick. And I had to abandon everything. Other than the day job, I had to abandon everything for like a year. I just I just stopped doing everything for like a whole 12, 14, 16 months. Um, and that was really rough. 
so since that point I've put certain safeguards in place to make sure that I don't reach that point again I don't hit that red line anymore um, or it's very quite rare that I hit that red line um, I have a certain number of internal amber and red flags uh, that I look out for for myself my wife also has a number of internal amber and red flags that she looks out for me um, most recently um, I decided uh, well I won't go into specific details but if I've got too much work on if I start taking more work on then I will stop doing something if that makes sense so for example if I'm uh, doing four pieces of contract work and I'm doing two streams a week if I take on another piece of contract work I'll probably stop doing the stream uh, at one stream a week for example so I'll try and balance it that's actually quite a lot of work thinking about it but so at the moment I have two pieces of contract work on so I'm not going to start streaming again just yet I say streaming again just yet. I did stream recently, but streaming again just yet uh, consistently, if that makes sense. So I just want to get this work done, finished to a point where it's no longer a work in progress and then carry on streaming again. Because I have a feeling that if I'm doing that, I'm going to put a lot of pressure on myself. I'm going to be stressed out. I'm going to lose sleep. That's going to make me more stressed, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's just finding that balance of don't put not putting too much pressure on myself not putting too much stress on myself which is hard it's a, it's way easier to say than it is to do um but with practice it can get easier and that's what that's where therapy has helped me i'm, I'm practicing that i'm trying to put that sort of stuff in practice so that i'm not um i'm not approaching the the, the point of burnout anymore so um Focalorizon 899 asks What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Now do you mean an African or European swallow? Huh? I, I don't know that. <laughs> and finally, uh, uh, Peripheral Echo Alpha asks With all the consoles and gear you've purchased in regards to gaming and streaming, are you satisfied with all of it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> all right um no probably not and that's uh, there's a there's a few reasons for that uh, i i like the new shiny uh I'm a, I'm a tech nerd so i like new shiny but also i am working on this at the moment but i have a habit of saying to myself once i get the thing insert name of product or bit or wire or tech here my streams will be perfect once i get a light my streams will be perfect once i get another monitor my streams will be perfect once i get a capture card my stream it, it, whatever you want right it's that kind of um uh, consumerism that, that i'm trying to break myself out of there's nothing wrong with my streams there's nothing wrong with my content creation there's nothing wrong with this video but as soon as i get a better camera this is a good camera this is a nikon d500 uh, d3500 this is a decent camera um but as soon as I get a better camera, my streams will be perfect. That's not true. It's not true. It's uh, I've got more than enough stuff than I need. Um, which is why at the minute I'm working on that not taking priority. My, that, that thought process not taking priority over... Um, actually what I've got is good let's just stick with that it's almost like I'm constantly waiting for the ideal moment to to start content creation and it, I'm already in that ideal moment I'm already in that moment so why aren't I doing it I'm doing it now this isn't the ideal moment but it is to me so I'm doing it right now um but yeah I'm not uh, I'm not satisfied with it, but I want to be I really want to be because I've got good kit I've got a good game collection I've got retro game collection I've got loads to play it on but there was a bit inside me that was like oh, as soon as I get a better retro tink which is a, a device um, that helps you play retro consoles on HD TVs uh, as soon as I get a better retro tink I'll be able to I'll be able to stream them I'll be able to use them and like I've already got a retro tink and it works perfectly fine so why aren't I using that? Oh, but as soon as I get the better one, that'll be that'll be good. Um, so yeah, no is the short answer to to am I satisfied with all my stuff? But I'd like to be. So I am incredibly appreciative of everyone who sent in questions. I've done a cheeky cut at the end of this so as not to remind you to smash the subscribe button because I nearly slipped into my old ways, but. If you want to, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. There's never a pressure. Um, 
but just be nice be nice to each other be safe be awesome and i'll see you next time thank you very much